for the for Tumba Babu Rally standard? Uh, Timba, it uh, definitely must have felt like a hundred uh, big knock from you today to put the team in a good place. Uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, probably one of the, the innings that I'll save in my career um, thus far. Um, I think it wasn't it wasn't easy for me, um, especially coming from having not much cricket. Um, yeah, it's one of the innings that I'll save in my career. Was it something about sorry? Was it something about the Wanderers? You know, having played here quite a lot of your cricket and, and having come back here, and also when you were batting with Quinton, it looked quite good. Memories from back in the day. Yeah, look, um, obviously I started my first cl first class career here at the Wanderers, so I think probably coming in I knew that, you know, as a batter it's never easy here at the Wanderers, especially if it's some um, first class games. Um, you know, I knew that we'll be up for the fight, um, especially considering that you're coming you're coming up against a world class bowling attack as well. So I guess maybe I had that um, I had that advantage, um, but yeah. Not much I can say. <laughs> yeah, Mone was very dis um, he's very disappointed. Um, he did he did um, throw some profanities, um, <laughs> but he was very disappointed. I kind of felt for him. It kind of took away the disappointment that I had, um, and you almost had to give him the shoulder to to kind of cry on. <laughs> Tim, you mentioned it not being easy to bat at the Wanderers, but especially this morning, I mean, you went through a, a long uh, period where you weren't scoring, but did, did what Amna and Alga did in PE, did that come to mind where you sort of always just aware that you just had to absorb and then you could cash in later? Yeah, my thinking at that time, um, I know I generally at the Wanderers in the mornings, it's quite, it's quite hard for the batters to score. Um, the wicket is still soft, it's still soft um, so the ball generally um, nips and swings a bit more. Um, and I, ju I was just moving with the belief that later on it will get easy, the bowlers are going to get tired and I'll get opportunities to, to score. I think they bowled very well there in the morning and I had to respect that. Um, but my confidence and comfort came from that um, I'd be looking to score my runs later on. Yeah, on the morning question, did you want to be crossed at Mornay but that you couldn't do the ball with the no, I would never, I'd never be cross at 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 at, at Monet or the other better. Um, I think I can only look at myself, you know, look back at my innings and say maybe there were opportunities that I let go, that I could have um, turned it into a hundred. Um, in saying that, you know, I'll take a lot of confidence and comfort from the fact that I was able to assist the team into getting into such a, such a strong um, batting position, um, and rather just focus on the game and what that requires. Remember those last two wickets went out pretty quickly. Uh, you know, were you, how disappointed were you that you couldn't get there, or, or does it, you know, 95 is as good as 100 as you were? Yeah, obviously everyone wants to get 100, especially me. It has been a while. Um, in saying that, you know, um, the team was in a good position, and I think that's what mattered most at that point in time. And I had to get myself into that um, into that um, mental frame to make sure that I can still contribute um, with the team um, on the field. Yes. Tim, but where do you see? Kind of your position now going forward, you know, at the start of the summer, it looked like Eddie was coming back and you weren't sure. Now there's Tina's. Just for the next couple of seasons, how do you see your role? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that's something that um, I'd probably put up to the management, the captain, and really hear from them. Um, to be honest with you, I, I can't really answer you um, to say that we are fit, where, where I would fit in the team. Um, I find myself betting in the middle order, and I guess it's just a matter of waiting for those opportunities in the middle order again. But that's a question you probably want to put forward to the management and captain. Uh, what did you make of the Australian bowlers and just the Australian sort of performance and you know body language and all that in general? It's obviously a tough day for them. Yeah, look, I don't think the bowlers disappointed themselves, to be honest. Um, I mean, if you look at a guy like Cummings, he ran in there from ball one to the end. And he was, um, he was richly rewarded for that. Um, Hazelwood as well. Um, as well as the, the debutante um, and Lyon as well. I think um, the bowler showed a lot of fight. Um, but I guess, unfortunately, um, the South African batters um, we were probably better on the day. Um, but I think you know it was a it was an Australian attack. You know that you that we were quite used to a lot of fight and guys who never who never gave up. So just do you, do you feel they're struggling with you know the <coughs> situation and everything going on? I mean, David Warner had a press conference back in Australia this morning. It's, the issue just keeps on you know going and going. Yeah. Look, I think. It would be it would be crazy to think that there wouldn't be an effect on the team. Um, they have lost um, 
you know, players who played a pivotal role within their success as a team. Um, and I think, you know, that is got, that's probably going to show within the next couple of games as they try and fill the void of those players. Um, they lost their captain, you know, and I would like to think that they depend a lot on him um, in all aspects of their game. Um, in saying that, you know, they're still a, they're, they're still a team that um, has enough firepower, um, enough, enough skill and quality in them to, to really um, be more than competitive against other teams. Tim, um, some people, uh, regardless of the sort of context of your runs <coughs> or how tough it's been, seem to throw at you the fact that you've only got the one test century. So, d d do you see today as a bit upsetting that, that you, or does that not bother you? Not really, Ken, to be honest. Um, like I said, as a better, first and foremost, you like to be scoring centuries. Um, at the end of the day, that's your job. But I think, you know, looking at my career, looking at what I've done for the team, you know, there's there's other areas where I can take comfort and confidence from. Um, it's not like I second guess my position or role within the team. You know, I know that I've done enough um, to, to push for um, a position within the team. But yeah, I think, you know, in a selfish way, statistically, you probably want to have a lot more hundreds, but I'll take my career um, as it's panned out um, so far. So, um, what would you say to the critics that say that you don't deserve your spot in the side? I think they should keep coming, they should keep going. Um, I think, you know, some people, those kind of things, they put them down. Other people, they fire, fire them up. And I think I'm one of those people. Um, I think whatever you do, you're always going to have critics. I'm sure A.B. de Villiers has critics where he's sitting at the moment. Um, and it doesn't really change the person I am. You know, whether you think I'm a good player, whether you think I'm a bad player, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to lose sleep on it. So they can keep saying what they want to say, really. Yeah, the last few Timber, you, um, you spent 35 balls on 26 today. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think it's because you were you know, trying to force the Australians to, to change the way they were, they were playing. Um, what does it take to, to develop that kind of patience and, and discipline? How do you stay in that mode? Yeah, I had to exercise a lot of discipline. Um, I think my first class career coming up, that's really how I think I was able to get my success. Um, was was that discipline, um, setting a goal and understanding what you need to do and then just staying with that. Um, I think I've been in situations like that. If I look back in England at the Oval, you know, it was a similar situation where the ball was um, was moving around and you really just had to stay out there and um, just keep, keep calm um, and understand that there will be a point where you can score runs and then that's when you got to make sure that you're in the right mental frame to dominate. That's what that's what I tried to do, and yeah, fortunately it came it came off. Yes, Tim, but where do you stand in terms of players needing to play some domestic cricket before they make a comeback? Like we've been having this debate, and Fab says it's more about mental space. Yeah, I think there's a bit of both. There is the mental, and obviously the the playing point of view. Um, I think at the end at the end of it all, it is up to the player. Um, I'd like to think so, especially if you have guys who have played so many games. Um, if you're going to ask a good guy like AB, you know, I'd like to think that he's managed to um, earn that kind of respect where people will um, will accept what he says. Um, yeah. Did you want to play some domestic cricket? Uh, me? Yeah. When? Uh, before this uh, test series, or I mean, I don't know if <coughs> you were available. Or before the test series. Uh, I don't think there was an opportunity before the test series. There was an opportunity in between the second and the third. And uh, me personally, I would have loved to play from a cricketing point of view. But um, unfortunately, um, there were um, prior commitments that I'd made before the actual series um, that had to do with the family. And I wasn't able to, um, to move that. Um, but yeah, if, the, if looking back now, I probably would have wanted to play that game. Thanks, Seb. Congratulations on those prior commitments that you had. Timber, what, what was the chat? Was it anything like, guys, we need 20 wickets to win this match after putting up close to 500 on the board? Was there any chat of that nature from the captain or from the bowlers themselves, knowing that this could be a big victory for us, an innings victory? Uh, I think, first of all, from a betting point of view, um, we're quite happy that we managed to get over 450. Um, we weren't expecting them to have them six down at this point in time, um, and it's quite it's, it's it's a bonus for us. But I think um, I don't think we've had the chat yet on um, what we, what's going to happen when we do um, when we eventually bowl them out. Um, it'll have to be a collective decision, you know. Um, 
we've only have three seamers and that's something that we have to look at um but i think you know we'll see we'll, we'll, we'll get over that hole when we get there we still have four wickets to get um so let's get the four wickets first and then we can start thinking about um enforcing the follow-on or batting again okay, we'll be waiting for the <laughs> thanks everyone thanks